Hi, I am Dr. Silverat, your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical clerkship rotation. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. Today in this episode, I am going to discuss one more pediatric surgical problem, namely hypospadias. I will be uh, discussing a comprehensive overview of the hypospadias. So what is hypospadias? <coughs> hypospadias is a congenital condition in male babies where the urethral opening is located on the underside of the penis or on the ventral side rather than at the tip. Normally, the urethral opening should be somewhere here. But here you are seeing the opening is here somewhere. So this is what is called hypospadias. It can vary in severity based on the location of the urethral opening. Urethral opening may be from the tip. It may even go up to the perineum. That are the various types of the hypospadias. Broadly, we can divide them into anterior hypospadias, middle hypospadias, and posterior hypospadias. The anterior hypospadias consists of glandular, coronal, and subcoronal varieties. You can see this. The middle hypospadias consists of distal, penile, and mid soft. The posterior hypospadias consists of proximal penile, penoscrotal, scrotal, and perineum. So these are the various types of hypospadias. What is the ETO pathogenesis? It is always multifactorial. Genetic factors like the family history increases the risk. Environmental factors like maternal exposure to certain medications, smoking, and endocrine disruptors. Hormonal factors like disruption in the androgen levels during fetal development. In this page, you can see detailed explanation of how the hypospadias develops. Hypospadias, you all know, is a congenital defect that is thought to occur during the embryological development of the urethra between 8 to 20 weeks of gestation. The external genital structures are identical in males and females, that is, undifferentiated external genitalia. Until 8 weeks' time, it will be like this. After which time, the genital structures develop a masculine phenotype in males. This is the male external genitalia, primarily under the influence of testosterone and its byproduct, dihydrotestosterone. The cause for this is because of testosterone, okay, this undifferentiated genitalia will become a male phenotype. The urethral folds join in the midline from base to the tip, forming <coughs> a tubularized penile urethra and median scrotal raphe. You can see this is the urethral folds which is fusing from here to the tip. This accounts for the posterior and middle urethra is joining like this. The anterior or glandular urethra is thought to develop in a proximal direction with an ectodermal core forming at the tip of the gland penis which canalizes to join with the more proximal urethra at the level of the corona. The higher incidence of subcoronal hypospadias supports the vulnerable final step in this theory of development. 
So this is in detail about the etiopathogenesis of hypospadias. What are the clinical features? Abnormal location of the urethral opening is quite obvious on the ventral aspect of the penis. Usually there will be downward curvature of the penis, the proximal part. That is, that is called cardi. Hooded appearance of the foreskin or the prepuce will be there. There will be difficulty with urination, especially in very severe cases, resulting in splaying of urine. Investigations, of course, physical examination is the primary method of diagnosis. We need not do any other investigation. But ultrasound you have to do to rule out any genitourinary associated anomalies. Genetical, genetic testing should be done in cases with a family history or severe presentations. Coming to the treatment, surgery is the primary treatment for hypospadias. The goals are the correct position of the urethral opening. We have to correct the position of the urethral opening, straighten the penis and improve the cosmetic appearance as well. Typically, surgery should be performed between 6 and 18 months of age. The surgical techniques for anterior hypospadias involves mainly two procedures, namely MACP and the TIP procedure. There are hundreds of surgical procedures are there for hypospadias repair, but I am going to highlight what is currently used for the anterior hypospadias, two procedure I am going to tell, and for posterior hypospadias also, two procedure I am going to show. So MACP is mantle advancement and glanuloplasty, and TIP is tubularized incised plate urethroplasty. I am not, I am just showing you the diagram. I am not going to discuss step by step the operative procedure that I will be doing in a separate video, in an operative surgery video, I will be doing it. Here I am showing you this is the MACP procedure. This is for anterior hypospadias where usually it is at coronal or subcoronal level. Meatal advancement. See, you have to incise like this. Then make an incision before the urethral plate and then you have to pull it forward. This urethral opening, you have to pull it forward. You have to cut the glands here and then you have to suture the glands so that we are doing this is glanuloplasty and we are pulling the meatal meatus to the tip and that is called meatal advancement plus we are doing the glanuloplasty also. So this is MACP procedure, very simple procedure. The another one is tubularized incised plate urethroplasty where of course you have to do this is the prepuce then you have to make an incision like that uh, along the urethral plate in the glans penis and then this urethral plate you have to incise exactly in the midline which this incision should extend into the urethral opening then you can you can uh, I mean pull this part apart and this one this side and okay this is the incision midline incision then you have to tubularize this urethral plate like this. Of course, you have to put a catheter inside the urethral opening. Then you have to close this, um, these flaps watertight. You have to close with continuous suture. You can use Vicryl uh, for suturing this. And then after suturing this up to the tip, then you can put the previous which we have mobilized can be put here. And then you can close the wings of the uh, the glans penis. You can close that also. <coughs> this is what is called tubularized incised plate urethroplasty. The surgical techniques for posterior hypospadias also. I am going to explain only two procedures. 
Number one is two-stage procedure for very severe case with significant cardi. In the first stage, you had to correct the cardi. And in the second stage, we had to do the urethroplasty. This is the two-stage procedure where in the first stage, we, you have to see here it is there already. The urethral plate and the atrophic spongiosum should be excised. And then this should be straightened, a fenestrated free graft, that is the foreskin, can be sutured into the urethral plate bed. This is first stage. See, you have to correct the cordia and then you have to put a, this prepuce skin you can put here. And then the second stage, after six months, you have the graft edges should be mobilized widely. This is the graft, so this skin graft. So you have to mobilize this one widely and then in the midline, okay, you have to tubularize this skin graft and make it as a tube. Continuously you have to close and then close this in multiple layers. This is actually the actual one of my cases I am showing here. So this patient has got a perineal hypospadia. See, I have already done a cardiac correction and urethral plate has been removed and I have put the, uh, the prepucial skin over this part of the urethra. I mean the penis, the under surface of the penis. So after this, you have to put some stay switches like this in the, in the scrotum and then make a big U-cut from the tip of the penis. From the tip of the penis, you have to make a U-cut including this urethral opening and you have to tubularize that U-incision and you have to make a new urethra which will be from the perineum up to the tip of the penis. So watertight, you have to close. So this is the skin flap that you have to mobilize and then tubularize it so that the perineal urethral opening, now because of this new urethra, it will go up to the tip of the penis. Then you can close this defect in as many layers as possible. You can bury it inside. And here you are seeing a, um, <coughs> a supra pubic uh, uh, cystostomy. This is diverting the urine from this, uh, I mean, this uh, repair. So now urine will be passed through the urethra. All the urine will go through this. Supra pubic cystostomy was done here. The only pedicle graft is <coughs> unlike the two-stage repair, it is a single-stage repair where the degloved and plate is preserved and post-cardi correction graft length should be assessed. And then you have to make a uh, inner prepucial skin graft is mobilized on a vascular pedicle. So this you have to mobilize. And that you have to bring it down. The pedicle is windowed and then this should be wrapped and then continuously this should be sutured to this U-shape incision. You have to suture it over it. So this is an onlay pedicle graft. The, the pedicle, the onlay, this graft is from the inner surface of the prepucial skin. Coming to the post-op complication, post-op care is mainly catheter management. Catheter should be kept at least for one week's time. <coughs> and pain control is very important. But if you are doing a SPC, mostly no urine will come through. The Maybe only a little amount of urine may come through this. And another thing is pain control. You can give analgesic. And then infection prevention, you have to give, of course, antibiotic for that. Common complication is Fistula formation or urethrocutaneous fistula is the commonest complication after this hypospadias surgery. It's very common. And then urethral stricture also can happen. Recurrent cardi in some cases. 
and some cosmetic issue in some patients. So hyperspadias is a manageable condition with proper surgical intervention. Early diagnosis and timely treatment are crucial for optimal outcomes. Consult either a pediatric urologist, pediatric surgeon, or a plastic surgeon for individualized care plans. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you think that these videos are very useful, please subscribe to this channel and share this video in your social media. If you want to get notified regarding my latest upload, kindly click the bell button here. Thank you once again for watching this video. Let us meet in an, yet another video. Until then, bye-bye.